Today on Mark's Game Room, we will take you to the battlefield of Antietam as we try to write a war game scenario about how A.P. Hill was able to save the Army of Northern Virginia. His attack of only a thousand troops or so turned back an entire federal corps. How do we turn that into a fun and balanced war game? Well, I think the terrain played a larger role in the battle than I originally thought. So let's walk the battlefield and find out in this episode of Good Ground. Twas on the field of Antietam where many's the soldier fell. Is where occurred the story which now to you I'll tell. 1862 saw one of the bloodiest days in the American Civil War. But that year also saw one of the most remarkable turnarounds in military history. The Confederate Army began the year with their backs to the wall. General George McClellan had pinned them against the defenses of Richmond. But when Joe Johnston, the rebel commander, was wounded, Robert E. Lee took command. He immediately took the fight to the Federals. In only 90 days, he drove them from Richmond, smashed a second Union army at the Second Battle of Manassas, and launched an invasion of Maryland. But as Lee moved north, he faced a dilemma. A large Federal garrison at the arsenal at Harper's Ferry remained in his rear. Deciding that it must be eliminated, he split his army into several parts to both surround Harper's Ferry and maintain control of the mountain passes in the area. The Union Army, thanks in part to a lost copy of Lee's battle plans falling into their hands, moved to attack and tried to defeat the Army of Northern Virginia while it was spread out. Lee placed part of his army in a bend of the Potomac River at Sharpsburg, Maryland. On the morning of September 17, 1862, the Federal Army, commanded once again by George McClellan, attacked in a series of uncoordinated movements. The morning saw a violent confrontation for Miller's cornfield, which the Federals captured at a horrendous loss of life. The fight then moved to the sunken farm lane that became known as Bloody Lane. Again, the Federals prevailed, but at great cost. The battle then settled into a draw, with the rebels pushed back but not defeated. There remained one last chance for McClellan to crush Lee's outnumbered army. Ambrose Burnside's Ninth Corps was ordered to cross the Antietam Creek and capture Sharpsburg, cutting the Confederate line of retreat. By late afternoon, he was well on his way. Part of his men found a ford over the creek, while two regiments were able to charge across the bridge and push up the steep bluff. With the Confederates falling back, it seemed to be a short push to capture Sharpsburg and win the battle. But what the Federals did not know was that Lee had one more card to play. General A.P. Hill was on his way from Harper's Ferry. Hill's division had force marched the 14 plus miles at a killing pace. Upwards of 50% of his men fell out on the march along the way. But the few men that would make it to the battle would hit the Union with devastating effect. So when I decided to write a war game scenario for With Hot Lead and Cold Steel about A.P. Hill's attack at Antietam, I was immediately puzzled. How could an outnumbered force of footsore and exhausted Confederate infantry launch such a devastating attack? To help figure this out, I turned to one of the best resources I know, which is The Maps of Antietam by Bradley Gottfried. It is excellent for helping me write good scenarios as it gives fairly detailed unit positions and movements throughout the battle. As good as it is, I still was not sure how to translate its two-dimensional maps into a 3D wargaming table. I also looked at Google Earth, which seemed to show that the terrain was fairly flat and open. 
Surely there would be no chance for a force of a few hundred rebels advancing across an open war game table to drive off the Federals. Although it looks like good ground for the Federals, it must have been good ground for A.P. Hill and his rebels. Ben and Austin are at Burnside Bridge with the goal of reaching Sharpsburg. Using the maps of Antietam as a guide, they will walk the route of the Federal Division that was hit by A.P. Hill. Let's see if it's good ground. We are in Burnside's 9th Corps, and we've actually been ordered to take Burnside's Bridge just over here to our right, over this bluff, straight on to Sharpsburg. I, I don't know, Ben, what do you think about this terrain? I think if it was his bridge, he could have bought a better one, because not only is the bridge relatively thin, we get like four or five guys abreast here. Uh, we got a huge cliff on the other side. We do. <laughs> with Confederates on top of it shooting down, that seems kind of a problem. <laughs> Right, right. And I mean, we have this nice staircase that the battlefield provided, but it won't be there for us. No, so. no, no. Uh, I mean, let's look at what this looks like on a map, right? So when Absolutely. you come here and you're looking at a map of the Civil War, we're about here. And it looks like there's some Confederates just kind of standing in a cornfield on the other side. And it looks like, you know, relatively flat terrain. But you come here and it is just this hilly mess and right in front of this bridge in particular uh there's just a sheer cliff that looks almost impossible to climb certainly under fire i i imagine the best way to do it is just simply to throw body after body at it and hope they run into ammunition or break but especially from a two-dimensional perspective it, this map right. is not exactly where we need it to be well let's start throwing our bodies over it and get this started Ben and Austin are going to walk to the position that Harlan and Fairchild's brigades from the 9th Corps took to attack Sharpsburg. After climbing on the bluff, they do not see a flat war game table all the way to Sharpsburg. Instead, they are met with rolling hills and steep ridges. All right, we took the bluffs. We sure did. And reading the map, I thought this was going to be flat past there. No, no, look, we've still got another hill. Yeah, I can't even see Sharpsburg. No. I can see a, just another ridge line, another 50 yards ahead. The map, the map was wrong. The map lied. <laughs> we no. just came up a hill, how is there another one? Oh, uh, it, it's never gonna end. It's yeah. just gonna keep going. Who made this war gaming table? Uh. All right. Well, that was yeah. a steep hill. Yeah, finally, finally, a little windy up here. <laughs> More than enough is windy. Okay. Uh. All right, well, we're on this flat ridge now. Yeah, temporarily. We still got these crazy rolling hills in front of us. And is, is that Sharpsburg up there? Oh, let's, let's look at the map and see. All right, so we're, we're here at Durrell's Battery. All right. And yeah, Sharpsburg is over there. Where that water tower uh, is right, about? That, that's a water tower in yeah. Sharpsburg. So we still can't see the town. We can just see the tip of the water tower, but it is over there. We were told that we were going to see it even down there. Yeah, they were wrong. <laughs> It's still hilly country. It's still behind another ridge line. We got a ways to go. All right. So All right, Fairchild. Well, yep. That's going to be me. Yep. Don't, don't worry about that. I'm going to head right towards that yeah, tower you and take attack Sharksburg. Straight there. And I will guard your left flank on All the right. side there. And I'll head off that way. Sounds good to me. All right. Okay. Best of luck. Good luck to you. Let's do this. All right. Meanwhile, Carl and Charlie are where A.P. Hill crossed the Potomac River, about three miles from Sharpsburg. We're starting our tour here on this side of the Potomac River, where A.P. Hill has just crossed uh, after marching from Harper's Ferry. And we're gonna be heading up to uh, make a flank march on the, on the Federal Army. At this point in the day, Ambrose Burnside uh, was trying to cross the famous bridge, whereas Hill was over here just getting ready to launch his part of the day's battle. Uh, all right, Charlie, let's go. So we're heading up the Sawmill Road where AP Hill's division is gonna end up on the flank of the Union Army. You know, it's crazy to think, Charlie, that uh, AP Hill's division force marched 14 miles from Harper's Ferry. That's pretty far. Yeah. He also lost half of his men. So when he got there, he had not much power. So he had to figure out ways to be sneaky, 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 sneaky. It makes sense that he lost so many guys uh, falling out of column on this road. I mean, can you imagine marching up and down these hills? No. Crazy. 
Carl and Charlie are starting from roughly where AP Hill crossed the Potomac. It would be about three more miles to the battlefield at Antietam. They will drive that route. When AP Hill crossed the river, Fairchild and Harlan's Union brigades were about here. Austin and Ben will follow their routes. Austin will be attacking Sharpsburg as Fairchild's brigade, and Ben, with Harlan's brigade, will move to guard his right flank. Ben quickly finds out how steep the terrain in front of him is. He also finds an unexpected obstacle. I'm here overlooking Harlan's position where he's guarding the flank. It's this vast 40-acre cornfield off this way. In this area of rolling hills and a deep ravine, was a cornfield twice the size of the more famous Miller's cornfield in the north part of the battlefield. The 40-acre cornfield swallowed up entire regiments and totally obscured visibility. Units could not see in it, out of it, or through it. And Harland marched most of his brigade right into it. Ben heads down to get a closer look. Meanwhile, Carl and Charlie make it to the battlefield. We're right here at the edge of the battlefield where AP Hill's division entered the battle. Uh, if you look behind us, there's this uh, modern day tree line. But back in 1862, it wasn't a tree line at all. It was a massive 40 acre cornfield, which you couldn't see in or out of. That's where we're gonna be executing this flank march today. You wanna give us a rebel yell, Charlie? Carl and Charlie are moving towards Ben, who is making his way deep into the area of the 40-acre cornfield. This entire time, they have never seen each other. The rolling hills and deep ravines, along with the trees which mimic the cornfield, block all line of sight. Austin is off to the north, moving against Sharpsburg. He faces difficult terrain as well. Okay, well. The objective was to attack Sharpsburg. Last we left off, we were in that ridge just over yonder, um, and we've attacked through these hills, not necessarily rolling hills, pretty steep as you can see down this ravine, and we've made it all the way up to this ridge right here, and we've attacked in the direction of Sharpsburg just over these other hills, and we've been hit by the Confederates multiple times, and we've pushed them back to that final ridge, but I think this is about as far as Fairchild is gonna be able to take it, because we're getting hit on the flanks, I don't know how long we're going to be able to hold, so I think this is about it for the, for the Union. Off to Austin's left flank, Ben dives into the jumbled terrain of the cornfield. What can anyone see from here? I'm here about where Harlan's Brigade made it to. This is around the middle of a vast 40-acre uh, cornfield that they made their way into. And you can see it's still very rolling terrain, it's not flat at all. Uh, if and when the Confederates do come up, you're just not going to be able to see how many there are, and it's going to be a very confusing fight. Speaking of which, I think I hear Charlie now. They're coming. All right, we're uh, entering onto the battlefield the way uh, AP Hill's division did. You know, it's crazy the wildly undulating hills and, you know, valleys of this battlefield really give you a sense of why this attack was able to catch the Union by such surprise as we move around their flank. We gotta head this way. Oh man, they're never gonna see us coming. Well, Charlie's right. Harlan's Federals never saw the Confederates as they marched up to the 40-acre cornfield. Now, walking the ground gave me a great perspective on writing a war game scenario for with hot lead and cold steel. The two main items that I will highlight in my scenario our hidden movement, and basing victory on a control of a variety of geographic locations. Now, having this variety should give each side several different ways to win, which I think makes for a better game. So look for our next video when we play the scenario using hot lead and cold steel. Now the video will also be a bit of a how to play, so if you're looking to get into the rules, don't miss it. 
So stay tuned and give this video a like as it really, really helps us. And we'll see you at the 40 Acre Cornfield. We've arrived in force now.